is the mysterious traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, and it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can. For tonight, we're going on the strangest journey we've taken yet. We're going down into the dark and fearsome depths of the sea to watch fate settle her account with the arch enemy of mankind. In a story I call Death Comes for Adolf Hitler. My story begins in the radio room of the American destroyer Spindrift on patrol duty somewhere in the Atlantic. It's late at night. Chief radio man Mike Williams, headphones over his ears, is checking on the dozens of messages whispering through the ether. Beside Mike, his relief man, Joe Norman, is sitting back with his feet up, working a crossword puzzle and mournfully humming to himself. I shall never go home. All the time I want to go to bed. A little quiet among Joe, home. Joe, cut it. What is it, Mike? Cut it, Joe, cut it. I'm getting something. You can just barely hear it. Something for us, Joe? Shh, wait. I'm getting it stronger now. There, it's clearer. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, what is it? It's a German sub. On the bottom and calling for help. Uh-uh. Ain't that something? Shall I notify the skipper? No, no, nothing we can do. Must be hundreds of miles away. Get a pencil on. Put on those headphones. We'll take down the message, whatever it is. Okay, I got a pencil here. I got the phones, huh? But... Are you kidding me? I can't hear a thing. Of course I'm not kidding. I tell you, I had it just now, then I traded out. Wait a minute. It's coming back in again. Hello? Hello? This is Oberleutnant Reiner, the undersea boat Wolf. Listen to me. Anybody who may be picking up this message, please listen to me. There's nothing anybody can do to help us, but please listen anyway. Makes it easier if I can talk, easier to face what is coming. Because we are, we are doomed, and we know it. Only yesterday afternoon, as we were cruising on the surface, recharging our batteries, we thought our mission was as good as accomplished. I was up on the conning tower with Captain Metz. With us was our passenger, our very special passenger who called himself Herr Schmidt. Of course, that was not his name, and we all know who he was. A beautiful day, Herr Captain. Particularly gratifying after our long submersion. Yes, Your Excellency. Uh, pardon me, Herr Schmidt. But we could take no chances on surfacing until we were safely past the area of Allied patrols. Of course not, Captain Metz. You must not take the slightest risk, as long as I am aboard. I am aware of that. Do not worry. You will reach your destination safely. I estimate that tomorrow midnight we will take our contact with the South American coast. And our journey will be over. Good. Understand there, Captain? No word of this trip must ever be breathed to the world, or yourself, or any other member of your crew. It is understood. You may rest assured. My crew is well trained. The world must not know or guess that back in the fatherland this is a devil who rules. We have lost. But I shall yet win. It would be disloyal of me to believe anything else, Herr Schmidt. South America, he will make my plans. The world will think me dead. Suicide. On the day Germany falls. But instead, I will be safely hidden. So I can direct our rebirth. Quite so. Our enemies will yet feel the might of my vengeance. I will return to lead my people to victory. However long it may take. Of course, Herr Schmidt. Five points, three points off the starboard bow. Nine, four, three points to start it. Pitching and tossing on the waves ahead of us was a lifeboat. It was crowded with gaunt-faced, bearded men who watched us pull alongside with hostile eyes. A dozen yards from them, Captain Metz ordered the engine stop. And then as our passenger looked on, and his cloak pulled up to conceal his face, Captain Metz questioned the men in the lifeboat. You're on the lifeboat. Who is in charge? I am, bless your eyes. What is your name? What ship? 
What cargo did you carry? What boat were you cleared for? Captain Peter Temple of the Mountain. No, Richard, sir. We were a relief ship carrying food and medical supplies to Greece when one of your murdering undersea dogs torpedoed us. Dave is wrong, Captain Jansen. You may pull away now. The nearest land is 300 miles due west of you. I will pull away. Pull, men. Let's get where we can breathe air not contaminated by this scum. And then, just as the lifeboat started to pull away, the wind unexpectedly whipped aside the cloak that our passenger was using to conceal his face. And in the lifeboat, Captain Peter Jensen, a burly giant of a man, recognized him. Men! Stop! Stop! You see that slinking rat in the ship of a man trying to hide his face? You know who that is? Take a good look at him so you can tell your children you've seen the murderer of mankind himself. The arch devil who really gave the orders that sent our comrades to the bottom. I fear you have been recognized, Herr Schmidt. Stop them! Turn your guns on them! Destroy them both, Herr Cameron! No one must leave the report having seen me! Very well, Herr Schmidt. Our guns are to fire! Over guns! Ready to fire! Give them two rounds! Over guns! Fire! Over guns! Fire! You filthy murdering dogs! So you're going to murder us too! You! You there on the brink! Listen to me! Every one of us will be waiting for you when your time comes! All of us think you hounds and jackals that murdered! We'll be waiting for you! Every one of us! We'll be waiting for you, and someday we'll get you. Remember that? Someday we'll get you. They are gone? Yes, we have finished them. There will be no eyewitnesses to tell us seeing you aboard a submarine in these waters, Herr Schmidt. It's good. Well, never know. That I have left Germany. Must never guess. The whole future, the fatherland. What is that sound? Bomber. Patrol bomber coming this way. Get below us, Hans. We are going to submerge. What is our depth now, Muller? Seventy-five feet, sir. Good. Then we should... The pump! They are coming closer! No, oh, they have lost us. They are bombing at random now. Yes, we are safe now. Depth, Muller. Ninety feet, sir. Ninety is good enough. Level her. Level her, sir. We will take course 180 and... Level her, I said. We are still making a five degree dive. The leveling planes do not respond, sir. We are damaged. The bombs have damaged them. Impossible. Not one of those bombs was close enough to break an egg. Muller, our depth. A hundred feet, sir. Leutnant Reiner, order half speed ahead. Half speed ahead? The ship to hand operation of the diving plane. Hand operation of the diving plane, sir. Now level her. Level her, sir. Uh, uh, well, what's the matter? Uh, Captain, the, the operating wheel. You are turned. Not turned. Our diving plane must be jammed, sir. They, they will not move. Not at all. Captain Metz, I demand that you rise to the surface. Something is wrong. Am I safe? Silence. I am captain of this vessel, and I am giving the orders. Very well. If our leveling planes are jammed. We will surface and clear them. Miller, step. 120 feet. Stop, Major. Blow the forward ballast tanks. Blow the forward ballast tanks, sir. Now our bow is coming up. They are leveling off, sir. Hold on, she is. Hold on, she is, sir. Muller. Yeah, How fast are we going up? We, we are not rising at all, sir. Not rising? None. With the motors off, we must be. We should be. But we are still descending at about 20 feet a minute, Captain. Captain, I demand to know what's wrong. I order you, take me to the surface. I am just as interested in reaching the surface as you are, Herr Schmidt. 
Blow the main ballast tank until we start to rise. Blow the main ballast tank until we start to rise. with gravel bottom, sir. But there's a fault in the ocean bed just east of our position. A crevice, 1,000 feet deep, sir. We are safely beyond that. Mother, our depth, 200 feet, sir. Our rate of descent, 10 feet a minute, sir. But our main tanks are empty, sir. We should be going up, not down. Nevertheless, we are going down. And as long as we are, we will bottom and lie quiet until the destroyers leave. And we will surface for repairs. Mother. Yes, sir. What are the destroyers doing? They seem to be still circling, sir. Perhaps they are trying to pick us up when they are detectors. We must see that they fail. Our depth? 220 feet, sir. It, it's almost as if... As if what? Uh, nothing, sir. Go on. As if what? Excuse me, sir. I was going to say as if something was pulling us down. Ah, but you thought better of saying it. Yeah. See that you continue to think better of such remarks. Same applies to everyone on board. Leutnant Reiner. Yes, sir. We will bottom in exactly seven minutes. Prepare to make an inspection of the ship when we do. Well, Leutnant Reiner. I have finished the inspection, sir. And your report? Everything is in perfect order, sir. There are no leaks. The batteries are fully charged, all motors in working order, all pumps operating. Then obviously there's no reason why, when we choose to surface, we should not do so. No, sir. Muller, yes, what about the bloodhounds who are trying to sniff us out on the surface? Those destroyers. I have heard no propeller sound for 20 minutes, sir. Then we will surface. Load the auxiliary tank. Load the auxiliary tank, sir. Maybe auxiliary tanks are empty, sir. All tanks empty? Uh, Captain, your pardon, do you hear? We have blown all our tanks and we have not risen at all. I am well aware of it, Lieutenant Reiner. Do you take me for an imbecile? No, sir. Of course not, sir. It is those that did. It, it is impossible, sir. Since it is so, it must be possible. Obviously, we are stuck in a mud bottom. But the bottom here is gravel, sir. The chart says so. The chart is wrong. I say it is mud, do you hear? Yes, sir. Mud, sir. So we shall have to use our motors to pull ourselves free. Signal full speed ahead. Yes, sir. Full speed ahead. They are not moving, sir. Now, what is it? Why have the fools cut the motors? Uh, excuse me, sir. Engine room reporting. Yes. What is it? Ah. Ah. Well, what have the idiots to say for themselves? They say the propeller is fouled. Fouled? How could it be fouled? It is impossible for it to become fouled on this bottom. Yes, sir. They say it is not entirely fouled. It, it will turn, but only very slowly. As, as if... As if what? Well, sir, they say it turns as if... as if something were holding it, trying to keep it from revolving. The fools. When we get back to our base, I shall court martial every man aboard. Perhaps the propeller is tangled with some seaweed. That is all. In that case, we may be able to reverse and free it. Full speed astern. Full speed astern! Now what? Your pardon. The engine room reports the propeller is still fouled, sir. It behaves as it did before. It, it turns, but as if something is holding it back. 
And to think that I, Hans Ludwig von Metz, thought I had the finest submarine crew in the world. A brainless pack of idiots who become stuck in the mud on the bottom and they go to pieces like old women. Now listen to me, all of you. The next man who shows... Capitan Metz. Ah, Herr Schmidt. I trust you have not been wise. Everything is quite under control. In my captain, I, I, I've been hearing sounds from outside the submarine. Sounds? What kind of sounds? Scratching sounds, tappings from the middle. They sound as if, as if someone is trying to get into the submarine. My dear Herr Schmidt, you had nothing except the noises made, perhaps by pebbles being swept against our side by the car. That is all. But I tell you, it sounds like, like hands rapping and tapping. Creeping at the hole, trying to get in. Why are we staying down here in the bottom? Surface at once, you hear me? I order you surface at once. That, your excellency, is what I am about to do. Now, all respect, may I suggest that you return to your cabin. Your presence here may uh, impede our efforts. I... I will, Captain. But see that you take me to the surface at once. You have no fears. Like Reiner, perhaps you will assist Herr Schmidt to his cabin. Yes, sir. Certainly. If I may open the door of the accident. Captain! Captain Nick! Well, what is it? Captain, we hear them too. Sounds. Sounds coming from outside our hull. I hear no sounds. Uh, Captain, I can hear them now. Quite plainly. On my detector phones. It's not possible to identify them, but they... They sound as if many people were climbing up our sides and... <coughs> there. Perhaps that will bring you to your senses. <coughs> Listen to me, all of you. Temporarily, we are stuck in the mud. The calm is sweeping debris or pebbles against us. You are all acting like children who think they see a ghost in a graveyard. In an hour, we shall be on the surface. You have my word for it. To get free from the mud, I shall fill the bow tanks, then blow them and fill the stern tanks. We shall seesaw ourselves loose. Do you all understand my scheme? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Very good. Let the forward ballast tanks. Let the forward ballast tanks, sir. <laughs> Captain Metz. Yes, Lieutenant Rainer. The main pumps are again operating, sir. The failure was caused by Hans Jäger. Jäger? How? He went crazy, committed suicide by grabbing the poles of the main switch. The short circuit electrocuted him, blew out the fuses. Nah, Jäger was always a fool. How have the others reacted to his death? Very badly, sir. They are very nervous. Nervous, are they? Yes, sir. That scraping and scratching outside of our hull has affected them, sir. They stopped for now, but... The crew says that it's just because they are planning something else. They? Who do you mean by they? The crew says, sir, uh, that there are hundreds of men in the water outside trying to get in at us. Dead men, sir. Lieutenant Reiner, do you wish me to place you under arrest? No, sir. I'm just trying to explain the state of the mind of the crew, sir. In spite of all our efforts, we are still on the bottom and the men... The men are getting very jumpy, sir. I shall have to teach them a lesson they will not forget. They're taking their cue from our illustrious passenger, of course. If he had not come out here with his ranting and raving... Never mind that. He's quiet now. They gave him whiskey with a sedative in it. Your pardon, Captain. If I may make a suggestion... Well, what is it? There is one thing we have not tried. Huh? They have to try it, sir. Discharge our torpedoes. Discharge our torpedoes? A submarine without torpedoes, Lieutenant, is... Is no more use than an airplane without wings. But we must, sir. We have ten torpedoes to throw. Twenty-five thousand pounds of dead weight. Get rid of that and we have to rise. We have to. I see you are beginning to share the hysteria of the crew. When we return to our base, I shall not fail to include that fact in my report. However, I accept your suggestion. Order the discharge of our torpedoes to begin at once. Yes, sir. At once. <laughs> Down. 
sliding down a slope on the ocean bottom. After we had fired six torpedoes, we were actually a hundred feet deeper than we had been. Then the firing stopped. I went forward to find out what was wrong. It's of no use, I tell you, it's no use. We are going down, not up, down. Yeah, what? What's going on here? Your man mumbling about. Why we not discharge the rest of the torpedoes? You know what is going on here, Harold Mant. We have fired six torpedoes to lighten ship, and what has happened? We are sinking deeper. He is right. Yes, we are going deeper. Our fleets will not stand it. We shall be crushed, drowned like rats in a trap. Right. 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 We are not going deeper. We have come to a stop already. Even if we should slide a little further, we still have a margin of safety of at least 100 feet. The effect we have moved proves we are breaking free from the mud. No, it is not true. We are not stuck in the mud. We are not. Ratman, no more of that. No more of that. Why should I? Be quiet. We all know we are not in any mud. We all know our tanks are empty and we should have been on the surface long ago. We all know why our propellers will not turn and we all know why we cannot rise too. Ratman, because we are being held down. We are being held down by a thousand dead men who are crawling all over us, scratching at our plates, trying to get in. They have come from all over the seven seas just to hold us down, just to see if we do not get away. Listen to them. Listen. You can hear them now. Listen. Ah, oh, what nonsense. What one come to your senses? It's but only our plates groaning under pressure. That is not true. You know better. We all know better. Who dragged us down here to the bottom? Whose hands are keeping our propellers from turning? Whose bodies jammed our dying plane? Whose weight is keeping us on the bottom? The dead. Rothman, I order you to be quiet. It is too late for orders. There is only one way we can escape. That is to give the ones outside the man they want. They want our passenger. The one who calls himself Herr Schmidt. We all know who he is, and so do they. And they have come to get him. Rothman, you are under arrest. Listen, listen, all of you. Let us get this Herr Schmidt with his poly mustache. Put him in a torpedo tube and send him out to the deck, outside. Let them have him. Then they will let us go free. It is our only hope. Hey, that one. Captain Metz. I heard your interesting little speech just now. And this is my answer. <coughs> Does anyone else want the same medicine to bring him to his senses? Then to your stations. Leutnant Reiner, continue to discharge our torpedoes. That was four hours ago. We have discharged all our torpedoes, and we are still on the bottom. Every few minutes, we slip a little closer to the thousand-foot chasm in the seabed. Very soon, inevitably, we will slip over the edge right into it. The whole submarine is filled with a great rustling, scratching, as though thousands of hands were clawing at it, tugging at it, pulling it toward that chasm. And the crew, the crew truly believes that we are being slowly but surely dragged toward it by the dead. By the thousands of dead who have gathered outside, drawn here by the hatred for our passengers. A hatred which is so great even death cannot catch it. They are right. Certainly our, our passenger believes it himself. He's in the next cabin. Captain Mitz has locked him in. Perhaps if I hold this microphone into which I'm speaking close to the bulkhead, you can hear him. Captain Mitz! Do something! I order you to do something! They are trying! They're drilling at the forest! Look at me! 
at a depth of 400 feet. What does it say? I will. Uh, another lurch. Now we are sinking fast. In a moment, our, our hull will be caved in like an eggshell. But first, I must tell you the message. I, I do not ask you to believe me, but the message was this. We are waiting for you, Adolf Hitler. We are waiting... <laughs> Traveler again. Is that the true story of the death of the world's arch enemy, Adolf Hitler? I do not know, so I cannot tell you. The man who told it to me, uh, perhaps he was joking, who can say? You must make up your own mind. But it is interesting to, uh, to think about. Mm -hmm. Yes, very interesting. It reminds me of another strange story I heard recently. Oh, you're getting off at the next stop. I'm sorry. But perhaps we'll meet again soon. I take this same train every week at this time. <laughs> In tonight's story, Death Comes for Adolf Hitler, Tony Barrett played Lieutenant Reiner, Philip Clark played Captain Metz, and Lon Clark played Adolf Hitler. The Mysterious Traveler is written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan, and original music is played by Henry Silverne. The entire production is under the direction of Duck McGregor. You've been listening to Theater of the Mind. Join us again next Sunday night for more vintage radio drama with The Haunting Hour and The Mysterious Traveler on 104 Chum FM.